Hey guys, today we are gonna make a really delicious beef coconut curry recipe. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna show you how to make it and you're gonna love this. When you're looking for your beef, I like to just get the pre-cut beef stew meat. That's what it'll, it'll say, it'll say stew meat. I got a pound and a half of this. This is the perfect amount. You can just go for a chuck roast or a chuck shoulder. We're gonna add half a tablespoon of coconut oil to our Dutch oven that's heating to medium high heat. If you don't have a Dutch oven, you can just use a bottom heavy saucepan. You could probably even do this in like a deeper skillet. So once your coconut oil is hot, we're gonna add in the stew meat. And we're just gonna brown this on all sides. We don't need to cook it all the way through. While that's browning, we're gonna cut up half of a white onion. Once your meat has browned, we're gonna turn the heat down a bit and we are going to transfer the meat to a bowl. Again, it doesn't have to be cooked through, just nice and browned. Okay, we're gonna add another half tablespoon of coconut oil to your hot Dutch oven or skillet. You're gonna scrape up the bottom Get all those flavors going. And now we're gonna add in the onion. And three teaspoons of minced garlic. Now we're gonna add two teaspoons of curry powder. You can find this in any grocery store in the spices section. It's an easy, fix to get all those curry flavors without having to have all the separate like coriander, garam masala, you know, all those ones that you might not wanna buy, turmeric. We're gonna do one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of pink salt, and half a teaspoon of chili powder. Give that a stir. Let all those spices cook down and get toasty. And your heat should be at low at this point. You don't wanna burn the spices or the garlic. So once that cooks down, and you can start to smell it. We're just gonna add our meat back in. And give that a stir. If your house isn't smoky, you're making the recipe wrong. So now we're gonna add in some water and some coconut milk to really get that curry base. We like to use Thai Kitchen brand this is the one we always use. It has the best separation when you put it in the fridge or the freezer. So this was in the freezer for five minutes to really separate the cream from the rest of it. We're gonna use the entire can of just the milk, hardened milk portion. So you don't wanna go longer than five minutes. This is, gets pretty hard pretty quick. I'm dumping out the coconut milk water right now. That's where all the carbs and the sugar are. and half a cup of water. Turn it up to medium at this point so you can get everything incorporated. So once everything is incorporated and fully mixed, we're gonna put a lid on, turn it down to low, and we're gonna simmer this bad boy for 30 minutes. And that'll cook through the meat, make it really tender, and the meat will also soak in all of the curry flavors. So it's been exactly 30 minutes and this has been simmering on low heat. It is done, it is good to go. The meat's cooked through, the onions are reduced. Every, all the flavors are just perfectly combined. If you like a lot of gravy, then you can serve this up right now or put it into prepping containers if you're gonna use this as a meal prep. This will go great with some cauliflower rice, but I personally like my curries a little thicker. So I'm going to turn the heat up just a little to medium low, and I'm gonna reduce this down for about five to 10 minutes until the curry becomes thick. So I turned up the heat and you can start to see it bubbling. That's a good thing. You're gonna leave the lid off if you decide to reduce down. We are back. It has been reducing for five minutes and it's looking really good. I'm gonna turn on the light so you can see this better. You can't even see the onions. They very really just cooked down so you'll get the flavor, but like not the little bits of onion. So this is good. I'm gonna turn the heat off and give this a tasty. All right, so this is perfect. It's done, it's sick. 
It's meaty, flavorful. Okay. So how would I eat this if I was about to dig in? I would probably have two things because I like to indulge. I would have a side of cauliflower rice and I would also have some low carb naans. We will link our low carb naan recipe below. That would go incredibly with this. It's like a flat bread. Um, so it's perfect for using your hands and scooping up the curry and the meat to make a little sandwich out of it. And then the cauliflower rice would just soak in all of the curry. So then you can eat that at the end if you've eaten all the meat. If you wanted to just make this a one pot meal, you could add in the cauliflower or even broccoli. Like the last 10 minutes you're simmering it and those vegetables will cook down, they'll become tender. And that'll just be like a one pot meal right here. So let me give it a try. It's actually really hot still. Okay, the curry is really thick, which I love. You get the coconut flavor and you get like the cumin and the curry powder. And then the meat isn't like fall apart. There's still some chew and bite to it. I've actually never worked with stew meat. Like you can just buy packaged like that. And now that I have, it has a, it has a really good flavor. So I would recommend it in all of your stews or soups moving forward. This is a recipe you're gonna wanna make. Share with your family and friends. Linked below in the description is exactly how to make it and enjoy. Let me know what you think. If you want more recipes like this, I will make them for you.